In this video I'm going to talk about the Australian Wallabies selection for their game against the All Blacks in Melbourne this Saturday. Thank you for joining me here on Inside Rugby and my name is Mark and in this video I'm going to be talking about that upcoming clash on Saturday in Melbourne, Australia between the New Zealand All Blacks and the Australian Wallabies. Now if you're not too familiar with the Bledisloe Cup, it was started in 1931 by Lord Bledisloe and since then the All Blacks and the Wallabies have been playing off nearly every year for this particular cup. And it's been 20 years since the Australians have won this cup, so Eddie Jones is pretty eager to get his hand on the cup again. This game's been played in Melbourne, and as we saw last year, a very tight tussle right to the end, and a little bit of controversy as well, but the All Blacks came away with that win, 39 points to 37. A last second try snatched victory from the jaws of defeat for the All Blacks. So we're going to see something similar this weekend. Are we going to see a tight and fast game or are we going to see an all-black walkover that's what everybody is talking about down under at the moment this is a really interesting clash for me this one and uh, it really could go either way and that's what the beauty is of world rugby at the moment you know I know a lot of Kiwis are gonna say no no the all-blacks are gonna thrash them and and all the rest of it well just settle down boys it's not going to be that easy because I'm sure Eddie Jones is gonna have his team up and pumped for this particular game. They know their backs are against the wall. They're heading off to the World Cup soon and he's got to get some runs on the board. So a few changes in this team that I'm about to go through and we'll see how those changes come on. As Eddie Jones said in his press conference today, it is the most important game so far this year for the Wallabies and they have a lot to prove. So let's have a look at the team and we'll start off in the forwards. In the tight three, we've got Angus Bell, David Parecki, and Alan Alalatoa. And uh, that's a pretty good tight three as far as I'm concerned. Angus Bell's been playing really, really good. Parecki only had one bad moment in the game. He was sent, uh, sent off. So he's got to fix up his discipline a little bit. And uh, Alan Alalatoa, well, he's had 66 caps for Australia, and he's going to be the captain, stand-in captain this weekend because Michael Hooper is out injured, and we've also got James Slipper, who's the joint captain of the Australian Wallabies, sitting on the bench this weekend. So Alan Alalatoa is taking on the captaincy role, which is great to see. So a good tight three for the Wallabies, and they're going to be up against it with DeGroote, Taylor, and Lomax on the other side of the scrum. We'll have to wait and see how the Wallabies perform. Then having a look at the locks, we've got Nick Frost and Will Skelton. Skelton's come back in a lot of talk around this guy. Yes, he's big. Yes, he's strong But for me, he still hasn't really delivered on the international stage And I think Will Skelton really needs to have a big game this weekend to show that Then looking at the back three, we've got Jed Holloway Tom Cooper and Rob Valentini. So uh, yeah, Tom Cooper's been playing really really well got a lot of time for him I think he's going to be something special in the Wallaby jersey and Valentini at the back is really, really good. Jed Holloway is great in terms of the breakdowns, and he's going to give them a lot of speed on the field as well. But this is a, a new look eight for the Wallabies, and I suspect the All Black uh, front eight are going to give these guys a bit of a hard time. If the Wallabies can come out and put a bit of intensity on that first 20 minutes or so of play, they're going to have to get their hands on the ball. They're going to have to win some set pieces. Their scrum's going to have to start off well. Otherwise, I can see the All Blacks dominating them up front if the Wallabies don't make a stand in the first 15 or 20 minutes. So that's so yeah, that's how I think things are going to go in the forwards. Now let's have a look at the back line for the Wallabies. And starting at number nine this week, Nick, Nick White has been dropped to the bench and Eddie Jones is giving Tate McDermott a try out at number nine as a start on number nine. That's going to be interesting to see how he handles not only the pressure of this game, but the powerful All Black backs coming over on top of him very quickly. See Carter Gordon coming in for his start at number 10. An interesting selection here at number 10 for Eddie Jones. He tends to do this, Eddie Jones. Pulls out a, a rabbit out of the hat every now and again. And uh, only time will tell whether Carter Gordon is the rabbit in this particular hat. 
And uh, Carter Gordon is from Melbourne, so he's going to be playing in front of his home crowd. That's always an inspirational thing to do, and starting for, at 10 for the first time in front of your home crowd, it's going to have him pretty pumped to go into this game. Heading into the Wallaby backline a little bit further in the centres, we have Samu Karevi and Jordan Patea. Uh, two big solid guys there. Karevi's been playing good rugby, and in particular against Argentina, I think he impressed. He got a couple of really good line breaks. And look, going back to that game, I think the Wallabies weren't too far away um, in that particular game. If a couple of things had gone the other way, particularly when they were putting pressure on in, in around about the 25 to 30 minute mark of that match, I think we could have seen a really different outcome from that game. So I really think the Wallabies are an unfinished product at the moment. And I think if they have a confidence building game, and that doesn't necessarily mean uh, a game where they beat the All Blacks, but I think if they perform really well, it's close and tight, I think they're going to draw a lot of motivation for that. And we're having Karevi and Pattaya in the midfield. I think that's going to do them a lot of, uh, a lot of good. But they are up against Jordy Barrett and Rico Ioani, and I think that's going to be a very telling matchup there in the centre field for both teams. So moving on to the back three for Australia, and we have we have Marika Koroibeti on the wing, and uh, as I've said in previous videos, I really like Koroibeti. He brings so much to a game, both on offence and defence. Um, haven't really seen him play a bad game through my memory, but uh, he's turning up against the All Blacks. He'll be pumped for this game. And uh, Corabetti's a tough one, so watch out for him on the wing. On the other wing, we have Mark Nawa Kwantawasi. And uh, Mark's been playing extremely well. Must be something to do with the name, eh? Uh, he's been playing really, really well. And he's a game-breaker, this guy. So we saw him score an intercept try against Argentina in the last few minutes. He's the kind of guy that gets up into the line quickly on defense. And he's got incredible speed and slight off foot. So we can probably see him making some really good breaks in this game against the All Blacks. And I think um, Mark is definitely a, a player that we need to watch out for, not only in this game, but going forward in the World Cup. I think he's going to leave his presence on the tournament. Then at fullback, we have Andrew Callaway. Um, Tom Wright just hasn't been doing it in the, the Wallaby jersey at 15, so Callaway gets his chance here to step up. Eddie Jones is looking for a solution at 15. And whether or not Callaway is going to be the answer, we'll have to wait and see until Saturday night. So there's the run on 15 for the Wallabies. I think it's a good team. I don't think the forwards are going to be able to match the All Blacks forwards. As I said in my All Blacks selection video, I think the All Blacks have put out a really, really strong team in the forwards for this uh, game for this weekend. And also their bench that's going to come on. I think the forwards that are on the bench for the All Blacks are also going to be able to take it to the Australian Wallabies. But if the Wallabies can get a sniff of ball, I think they can be exciting in the back line. I think they can be spontaneous. And I think they could cause the all-black defence some problems, but we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so let's have a look at the Australian bench and who are they bringing to the game on the bench. So going through the bench, we have Ulessi, James Slipper coming off the bench this week, Tupo, Richie Arnold, Rob Liotta, Nick White, Quade Cooper, and Isaiah Parisi. So a good bench there. Again, a 5-3 split going for Eddie Jones in this. I think in Tupo and Arnold, they have a couple of really good big guys that are coming on off the bench. Slippers a proven force, of, of course, in the tight three. And uh, Nick White and Quade Cooper are there to calm things down if things get a little bit carried away with the All Blacks in the first half. So we'll, we'll surely see White and Cooper coming on at some stage. And whether, it's not, whether or not it's going to be chasing the game against the All Blacks or whether it's being trying to consolidate things and looking at maintaining a lead that the Wallabies might have, we'll have to wait and see. So all around, I think it's a good Wallabies team. I don't think we can call this team great by any stretch of the imagination yet. They've got to put some wins on the board and they've got to do it against the top teams in the world. And they get an opportunity this weekend to do it in Melbourne against the New Zealand All Blacks. As I said in my previous video, I'm picking the All Blacks to win this game. I think it's going to be close, as Bledisloe Cup games tend to be, in particular in Australia. And I think unless the All Blacks get out to a dominating start again, I think the Wallabies are always going to think they're in with a sniff of victory in this game. So Eddie Jones knows it's a big one for him, his team and himself have to step up and put a marker down before they head off 
to go overseas to start that World Cup journey. This is their last game in Australia. Before they do that, they're going to be playing the All Blacks in Dunedin in New Zealand in a week's time. That's game two of this Bledisloe Cup series. And they're going to want to make sure that they don't lose this first game. Otherwise, the All Blacks already have their name on the cup. The All Blacks are going to be looking at closing out the Rugby Championship also in this game. Three wins from three matches, that's what they'll be after. So a lot of pressure on both sides. As I said in my previous video, the All Blacks have turned out a very strong team, a possible World Cup run-on team um, that's facing the Wallabies this weekend. So there's been no lack of respect shown from Ian Foster and his crew to Eddie Jones and the Australian players. So let's all sit back now and wait and see what happens on Saturday. I'm going to be following the game live and posting my review video shortly after it finishes. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button on my channel and come along for the ride because we've got Italy and Scotland this weekend as well, as well as the Springboks against Argentina in Johannesburg. A big weekend of rugby coming up right here on Inside Rugby. Love for you to come along. Don't forget to leave your comments, like the video, and tell someone else about this crazy, crazy Kiwi guy who's living in Cancun, Mexico, making videos about the game they play in heaven. Until next time, stay well, stay safe, and I'll see you on the other side. Bye for now.